take a seat. Thank you. I love you too. Oh, I love when you say, I love you, Jenny. I love you back. Thank y'all for being here. We're back in the house, family. Y'all feeling it? How y'all feeling? You feeling good? I'm so happy to see all y'all here in this beautiful place today with your beautiful faces. You look good. You feeling good? Yeah. That's what I want to hear. All right, we're going to get right into this thing. Today's mugshot moment. The lovely human being. This there is Vivian Mako from Orange County, California. You know she sent me a beautiful mug, right? And the mug says, <clears throat> I wish I could hear her say it. I'm speaking. Hello. OK. Y'all already know. Y'all already know. <sighs> That's what my granddaddy used to do. He used to say, he say, <sighs> So I done took it for myself and my mama used to say, you ain't want none, did you? <laughs> you see that? OK. <laughs> <laughs> it's good, too. Y'all keep coming back. I may give y'all a cup. But you know what? Vivian, she also wrote me a, a sweet message. Can I read it for you? Yeah. All right, now let's see what Vivian then said. She said, hey, Jennifer, I've been a fan since your American Idol days, and I'm so happy for all your success. Thank you, Vivian. Um, she also said, I remember you saying that you're more comfortable singing than talking. Did you know that? Yes, I am. Well, I used to be until I got to sit in front of all you beautiful people and talk to you. Uh-huh. Then she says, but your words of encouragement have inspired me more than you know. Keep shining your light. I know you'll keep singing, but keep speaking, too. You are an inspiration. That, isn't that really sweet? Thank you so much for that. See, that inspires me to keep going. So you guys, make sure you go to JenniferHudsonShow.com or to our socials for details on how to get your mug and your mug shot on the show. All right? Yeah. Yes, you never know. You might be featured uh, with your photo and, of course, your mug on the show. So get cute and get the snap of these pictures and send in those mugs. Now, remember when I asked y'all to tell me about your happy place? Well, Mama Hood called, and y'all definitely answered. Shiloh Georgeson from Omaha, Nebraska. Yes, she told me her whole little story. Let me tell you about it. Hi, Jennifer. Let me tell you about my happy place. I love this, which is watching my son Landon perform. He recently started show choir as a sixth grader, which is good. Stay in school, babe. And he is living his best life right now. He even had a video go viral of him dancing while waiting for the award ceremony to start. Watching him kill it out there is truly my happy place. I love that. Listen, she also sent the video, so let's take a look. Like, it's nothing like seeing our babies happy. And one of my favorite sounds is hearing my sons laugh. You know, isn't it beautiful to hear your children laugh and be happy and doing what they love? So I love that and I understand it because that's one of my happy places, seeing my kid happy just the same. So make sure you go to JenniferHudsonShow.com or to our socials so you can tell us all about your happy place. We would love to hear from you. Okay, it's Woman History Month. And our first guest is a spoken word artist here to perform his series, Flowers for the Living. From Chicago, please welcome Harold Green the Third. Come on out. If it's all smoke and mirrors, then which one are you? Fighting through the fog just to get a good selfie even if you don't like the view, you still put on face 
and try to leave without a trace. But in nightmares are the only place where you fall from grace. In dreams, it helps you wake before you break. But you're still wandering around in a constant haze, trying to rage your way through the maze. Burning sage, battling Babylon, lost in Zion. But how you gonna rebound when the weight of your expectations keep pulling you down? And every assist just turns into a 360. So you're right back where you started. They say sleep is the cousin of death. So I guess all these dreams are just our daily departure, resting power naps to our dearly departed. Your journey really started when you realized that the only currency you were receiving was a reality check. And then it took the world to stop for you to realize that you couldn't even afford to reflect. It took Maxine Waters for you to realize that time is your biggest asset. Because if you go up in smoke, then you're only an insurance policy. You only become dangerous when you start controlling your own destiny. A bomb is hard to use when you can't find the fuse. That was powerful and impactful. That is amazing. What was the inspiration behind that? Well, first of all, thank you so much for letting me be here. Like, I'm... You're welcome. I'm gonna be emotional because you have no idea how much this moment means to me. Before the year started, I said I wanted to have a national TV appearance this mm. year, and look at what happened. You gonna make yeah. me cry. Oh, wow. Um... But the inspiration came uh, from Georgia Smith's song, Burn. And I was a, a big fan of the song, and I listened to it a lot because I have this series called Flowers for the Living. And through that, I curate the playlist to these singers that I incorporate into this series that we do every year. And I kept listening to it and listening to the theme of it and the theme of, like, that whole burnout situation. And we've talked about that a lot since quarantine and since the pandemic. And I think it's even more fitting, you know, for Women's Equal Pay Day and how we are presenting ourselves to the world and how the world continues to take, 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 and take from us. Mm. And we have to take our own time and invest in ourselves. And especially for women, I think I believe so much in equality and women's equity and all of that good stuff. And I just think our biggest investments are ourselves. So we have to take our time. Beautiful message. Yeah. Wow. So you and I met doing Chirac yeah. a couple of years ago, and you wrote a poem, <laughs> Jennifer Song. Tell everyone about it. <laughs> Jennifer Song is uh, it's an ode to you. Yeah, and I think that... Um, I was so inspired because I started a, a, a viral series of Black Roses and Black Oak, and in its original uh, iteration, I wanted to make sure that I was using my work, which mm -hmm. I'm always trying to do, to lift others, right? Yes. And, and especially those in my culture and from my heritage and things like that. So I set out to have 10 videos for both sides, men and women, and then from there, it turned into a book deal for both uh, projects. and. Your piece is a part of that book deal um, with Black Roses, and I was researching you, and all of the research that I was doing, and thinking about the times that I've been around you, and how philanthropic you are, how magnanimous your spirit is, and just how genuine you are, and how you use your platform, as we see, to continue to lift other human beings has been such an inspiration. And I think the way that you handled mm -hmm. grief and turned it into grace, I think has been so wow. inspiring. Yeah, let me cry, Harold. <laughs> wow, thank you so much for that. How long have you been doing poetry? Oh, I've been doing this for a very long time. I've been doing it for 20 years. Um, I started writing my senior year of high school. Mm -hmm. So my dad, he used to write my sister and I poems uh, when we were little, and we thought it was cute and kind of funny because he has <laughs> bad handwriting. Um, <laughs> but we could always make out the fact that he would call us prince and princess, and we thought that was really cool. But I didn't really know how inspiring it was for me until my senior year. I started watching uh, HBO Deaf Poetry Jam, which I wish they would bring back. But it mm -hmm. was so inspiring to me because it was no longer that that kind of like stuffy poetry that I was being taught in school. It was something that I could relate to, and people sounded and looked like me. And I was like, oh, I can take the raps that I write and all of that good stuff and turn it into something else. So I started writing 
and I haven't stopped. And I think it was two very big moments that happened to me when I was in college uh, that really showed me that I should keep doing this. Uh, one was I had a classmate who sent me some uh, mail one summer when we were off, and she told me that if it wasn't for my work, it had a picture of her and her newborn son. She said if it wasn't for my work, he would have never met her because mm. she was having suicidal thoughts and listening to my work really kept her here. And I knew at that moment that my work was bigger than me and I couldn't be selfish in keeping it to myself. And um, then I was given two days, um, one day on the, the homecoming calendar and the day on the Spring Fest calendar, my show, my name on the calendar. And I was like, oh, I'm a professional, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> I do this, and now I'm sitting here. Now you're sitting here. <laughs> and we're so happy to have you. Thank you so much for being here. Keep writing, keep blessing everybody. Yeah. Give them a hand, y'all, to learn more about Harold and his work. Visit JenniferHudsonShow.com. We'll be right back. You know our first guest as Kate Pearson from the hit show, This Is Us. Her new children's book is called When I Talk to God, I Talk About You. Please welcome New York Times best-selling author, Chrissy Metz. How are you? I am wonderful. I'm so happy to see you. I'm so happy to see you. Oh, my goodness. Because I've been, like, obsessed with you. I know we all have, but I'm admitting it in, <laughs> in, every, in front of everybody. I love you, too. Oh, thank you. Oh, my God. We got to get down to it. I know. So, you, were, you auditioned for American Idol? Yeah, I did. Listen, I got third-degree sunburns. I waited for, like, eight hours. <laughs> I don't think people understand that. Yes. Like, it's not easy. It's a and process. Like, it's a process. You had a different experience mm. than I did, and that's okay. But um, I... <laughs> that's okay. We all have our journeys. Um, but I remember getting into, like, the final sort of, like, five people, uh -huh. five rows of five people. Okay. And they give you, like, 20 seconds to sing. They do. They do. In the middle of everybody. In the middle of everybody, after eight hours, third-degree sunburns. Yes. And, of course, I sang a song from Dreamgirls. I was going to ask, what did, what did you heavy. say? Heavy. You say heavy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> it's ambitious, right? <laughs> um, I know. Um, yes. Um, and I just, I just felt like it was appropriate and also sort of a message that I wanted to send. Yeah. And then, of course, they're like, okay, sorry, it's not going to be you this year. And I was like, what? Hold on. Hold on. Hold yes, on. So hold I was sort of line. protesting. I, I know. I shouldn't have probably done that, but I did. It's not like me. It's, uh -huh. I, I'm not a, like... Uh, well, if I think maybe if I feel, like, empowered to do it. Yeah. And at that moment, something struck me. I so don't something know. struck you, and you said, you're going to give me another shot. Yeah, I was like, this isn't right. And the guy was like, excuse me? And there were two judges at the next tent oh. who were like, come here, come over here. And I was like, okay. Mm, so it worked. So it worked. Sometimes you got to protest for what you want. I guess. And so I walked over, and they were like, audition for us, and they gave me a ticket to the next round. Look at that. Look at that. <laughs> I couldn't believe it either, but yeah. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, mine was a little different. Yeah, uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Now, <laughs> you worked in fast food like I did. Where did you work? McDonald's. Because I worked at Burger King. Uh, well, uh, listen, <laughs> talk about hard work. People do not get enough credit for no. working fast food. No. Right? Oh, oh no. my goodness. You're right. I mean, I learned invaluable lessons yes. doing that, but, like, I was in the back drive-thru because I love people. I was in the drive-thru. Uh, really? Yeah, girl. Okay, well, I would, I mean, what did you do to pass the time? I was singing at the at the draft. Lucky, that lucky was my customers. Microphone. Did you sing? No, no, no. I made. I, I just sort of acted like other people sometimes, like English accents <laughs> or just like mixing it up because you get bored back there. <laughs> so they're washing dishes or you know taking orders. So yeah, yeah I would do the accents, not the singing part. No. Lucky them. As soon as I heard that beep, I was like, this is my chance. They, Let me sing these yeah. people. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> yes, I did. Oh. Okay, so it's uh coming up a year since. This is us ended? Yeah. How does that feel? Sad. I know. Wow. Honestly, like, I'm so grateful for the journey, but uh -huh. like, and I miss my friends. I don't miss always waking up at 3 a.m. Oh, you had early calls, huh? Yeah, very early. I Although not that. as bad as Mandy, because Mandy would honestly be in that chair doing the prosthetics for like three hours. Because that's a process. Yeah, like three and a half oh hours God. before she even got to set. So I oh know, bless her. So oh incredible. But um, other than that, I miss I miss everything about the show. I can't believe it's been a year. Wow, okay. I know, well, I know. You know what, but, but now you launched your, your music career, right? Yes, and yes. How has that been? It's been great. Oh, that's good. It's been great, you know, I think. As a singer, you just want to you just want to sing. sing. You just want to write. You want to be creative, and so I'm grateful that I had to do that because, or I had the chance, excuse me, to do that because it's been my first love. Mm -hmm. um, my mom couldn't afford a band instrument when I was growing up, so I joined choir, and that's really sort of okay. how it happened. Yeah. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So, do you play any instruments? The CD player. <laughs> I 
have never heard anybody. <laughs> I am so good at pressing play. No, I'm trying. <laughs> I'm trying to learn the guitar, y'all. It's hard. It's hard. <laughs> Sing and do other things with your. No, it's hard. Yeah. 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 I find reading like sheet music. I'm like, how do you read that and look at the keys? Uh-uh. It's too much. I just play it. I'll hear it and then I'll follow somewhere oh, up I in there. I think you're doing okay. Am, okay. Yeah, I think you're just Thank you. fine. Thank you. So yeah. You gotta find your way through it. Fill yeah. it out. <laughs> okay, and you performed at the Oscars a few years ago. I did. Did you find that to be nerve-wracking? Okay, when my crush, Joaquin Phoenix, is like staring at me into my eyes. I mean, he's not really, but I think he is. It's like, you know, nerve wracking, but everybody around me, like my whole team, uh -huh. they were more anxious, I think, for me than I was. And so then that made me nervous. And I'm like, I've just got to sing the song. That's all I have to do. It's just That's, a song. I just, right, it's just a song. Nobody, yeah, you know, I'm not saving anybody's life. Um, but yes, it was very scary. <laughs> because sometimes you got to give yourself that pep talk because people can make you antsy and nervous. They do. But you know what I do? I always have an energy stone in my hand to balance my energy when I I'm in the wings of the I am such a crystal girl, too. So I'm going to give you one of my crystals, right? You should hold on to one before you go out because people energy will make you nervous. Absolutely. And then when it gets really nerve-wracking, I'll be like, it's just a song. Yes. Like, that's all you're doing. You're not flying no plane. You're right. not doing surgery. Right. It's just the song. It's just And a it song. helps me get through it. Yeah. So. Yeah, I'm gonna, I mean, I usually keep a crystal on my body at some point. Uh -huh. So when I saw those, I was like, oh my gosh, everyone loves crystals too. I do. Yeah, so it, it, I understand that. It centers us so yeah. we can get through those moments, Absolutely. right? Oh, right. Yeah. And you're celebrating three years with your boyfriend. Congratulations. Thank you, Bradley. Hi, Bradley. Oh, Hi, Bradley. Hi, Thank you. Nice. Oh, oh my no. God. Three years. Wow. It's, it's flown by, but it sort of feels like it's magnified because we met during the pandemic. So uh -huh. it's like dog years. I think it feels like 15 years. <laughs> Like, we were, like, three years is really 15 years in the pandemic. And that's a good sign, It's though. a great sign. Right? It's a great sign. Because time flies so grateful when for him. fun. Yes. I love that. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. Will you stick around a little bit? Yes, of All course. All right. Go with Chrissy. We'll be right back. Okay, talk about your new book, When I Talk to God, I Talk About You. I love that title. Oh, what made you. you want to write it? Well, Bradley and I, when obviously we're getting to know each other during our, our courtship, mm -hmm. um, so much of what you share, obviously, that's all we were doing was talking because we weren't, we yeah. were social distancing. And we just talked about how much prayer was so important in our lives. And my grandmother instilled that in me in a very young age. And thankfully, because I think that's how it would get through all the trials and tribulations. And I just think that prayer is such a beautiful, like, positive, it is. just um, consciousness, you know, and like with Damar Hamlin, I'm Hamlin, I mean, it's like to see the world sort of come and sort of put their arms and their prayers and their thoughts and their positivity around him and to see that miracle happen. That was incredible. It was incredible. Yeah, and whether you're religious or not or you're practicing, it's, it's just like this collective consciousness of positivity that I feel is so important and everybody can benefit from it. So anyway, we decided to write a book to instill that in young minds and hearts and, and readers because it helped us in our life. Mm -hmm. And so that's really the, the impetus of the book. That's it's so started. necessary in yeah. this day and age. So that's a, a, a blessing to yeah. all of us. I oh, love that I you're doing so. that. You also released a lullaby album? Yes. How did that come about? Yeah, so we were going to do, oh, I did an audio book for the, um, for the book, mm -hmm. and then we were going to write just sort of an instrumental to go underneath the audio book. Mm -hmm. And then we wrote with some friends, and we were like, oh, like these messages are really important, learning to be brave and learning to make friends and also being silly and fun and all the through lines within the book we wanted to have in a lullaby album. So they just sort of poured out by the grace of God. And um, yeah, we did that over the winter break. So it's, Aww. I'm very excited, very proud of, of, of it. Love that. Yeah, thank you. And then you have your nieces and nephews singing on Yes, oh, yes. Okay, so on two songs, Silly and Fun and Friends, my mm -hmm. nieces and nephews are singing on the songs, which is like so exciting for me to have like a creative yes. sort of collaboration with you know, they're four and five and 10 and That's 11. Adorable. Yeah. So. And they'll never forget that. I yeah. think stuff like that is so precious. I, yeah, You'll be able I agree. To say, Look at what you did. Yes. You were a part of this. Exactly. You know? <laughs> Thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. You're a joy. Keep writing, praying, singing. Thank you. Just being you. Thank you, Thank you so much. Chrissy's book, When I Talk to God, I Talk About You, is available everywhere. Children books are so. We'll be right back. the mood to serve up some blessings today. So let's play Do You Remember? Hey! Okay. Listen, it could not be more simple. Y'all, you just flip over two cards. 
If they match, you win that prize. Okay, sounds good? Can y'all handle that? Okay, let's see who our first contestant is. Really excited. I am. Okay, you got a good memory. I think so. You think so? Uh -oh. I know so. <laughs> okay, I believe you do. All right, introduce yourself to everyone who you are and where you're from. Uh, my name's Lexi Rivera. Um, I'm from Huntington Beach, California. Um, I've been an ER nurse for about one year now. And there you go. <laughs> you see that? You see that? Oh, I'm so sorry. Okay, you. Are you ready to play? Do you, did I actually, did you have a good memory or did I forget? I have a good memory. Okay, you got the memory. I do. Good, because you're the one who's going to need it. All right, I need you to choose two cards. All right. I'm going to choose number 13 because it's my favorite number. 13! <laughs> okay, you got some lip gloss so far. Okay. What else you got? Uh, number six, because I was born six. on the sixth. <laughs> Now, now, it's some, it's some good stuff up there. I think you should try again. <laughs> come on, come on, try one more time for me. You okay. more? Yes. Yeah. This is the happy place. I want you to try, to, try it again. All right, number nine. <laughs> That's actually not a bad gift, guys. <laughs> Yoo-hoo! Yeah! Okay. Okay, come on back. Pick another one. I'm gonna shut up. <laughs> Number one. <laughs> Number one and number six. What? <laughs> Givenchy. Yes. Come on, step up to the mic. What you say you wear? Givenchy. I can't remember the full name, but yeah. you smell so good. Thank you. She smell like a Pillsbury biscuit. Ooh. Oh Ooh. my God. Ooh. Can you introduce yourself? <laughs> Can you introduce yourself to everyone. Where are you from? Hello. My name is Tracy Todd. I'm from Bellflower, California. Come on, Bellflower, California. <laughs> And can you tell us something about yourself? Well, um, my husband and I are about to celebrate our 15th wedding anniversary. Okay, I'm gonna stay focused. You got a good yeah. memory? I believe so, yes. All right, we gonna help you out if nothing else. Okay. Okay, I need you to choose two cards. Okay. Uh, number seven, because that's my lucky number. That's right, mine too. Ooh. Seven! <laughs> we getting real lucky. What else you got? Um, 18. Oh. What we got? <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay. All right. Stay away from that. Okay, okay, okay. We need you to try again. Right. <laughs> I think we should try again. What else we got? Um, number 10. 10. <laughs> Yes. One more. Uh, three. <laughs> well. Wow. <laughs> well, that's my good old cat, McCavity. But see, listen, you, you, can, you can hold on to the picture, but you can't have my cat, McCavity. Okay. But you can have his picture. Thank you. But McCavity. We we'll want you to try one more time. Okay. He really would. All he right. really would. All right. Let's 
see. You want me to hold that for you? Sure. All right. Um, 14. 14? <laughs> Number seven. Seven! Oh. oh my God! You just got a 55 inch T C L TV to watch the Jennifer Hudson show off, and you get to take McCavity with you. you as well. Thank you. Thank you so much Thank for that. You. Give her a hand. I like that. We got more. All right, we come. Welcome back. We have a brand new board and time for one more contestant to play. Do you remember? Wait, where my mic? <clears throat> Do you remember? Okay, let's see who is the last lucky person who I got. Come on down. I love your energy. Your energy. Thank you. Can you tell everyone what's your name, where you're from, and something great about yourself? Uh, my name is Tamara. I'm from San Diego, California. Yeah. I am an educator of 25 years. Yeah. Yes, we love that. And I am, since you said this went women's history, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I am the first African-American um, principal at the school that I reside, which happens to be the first school that had a desegregation case in the United States before Brown versus Board of Education. <laughs> wow. All right. Making history. Yes, making history. Now, do you have a great memory? I'm gonna have a great memory today. All right. I like that attitude. Okay, can you choose two cards for us? The first number I choose is five for the founders. Five. For the founders. Here we go. Um, how about number one? Oh! I want that one. You, she said, I want that one. I want that one. Yeah, I think we should try again. Yeah. She deserves it. She's done great things, right? Okay. Okay. Now, what you got? Okay, what you picking? Somebody said 17, somebody said 16. 17 is a good number. Jennifer says 17 is a good number. We're going to go with 17. Okay, 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 okay. What you thinking? <laughs> I'm going to go with 15. Come on, you got this. I know you got this. Come on. Number one. Yeah. Number one. Yeah. And 15. Yeah. Yes! Who did it? 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 Who got an important? Yes? Give her a hand, y'all. Okay, honey, you're getting a three day, two night stay at Fairmont Scottsdale Princess, because you deserve it. Our next guest from the hit HBO show, Euphoria. She's starring in a new movie called 65. Take a look. Let me take my glasses off so y'all can see my eyes. Live in the yes. moment. 
it. Hi, Thank you so are? much for being here. Thank you for having me. This is amazing. You are a wonderful host, and Thank I just you. love to see your glow up, girl. Thank you. Yes. I love all the energy I receive it. Yes. Okay, let me get to you. Congrats on three seasons of Euphoria. Yes. Tell everyone what it's oh, about. Oh, y'all watch Euphoria? Yes, that's my girl <laughs> show. Tell us about your character. So I play Leslie Bennett. She's mm. the mother of Zendaya's character, Ruby. But everybody know her as Rue. Mm. So she's addicted to drugs. You know, she's going through her whole teenage angst. And I also have another daughter played by Storm Reed. Yes. Her character's name is Gia. So I'm dealing with all of the drama, trying to keep her sober, trying to keep the other child from experiencing the trauma. So it's trying to find that happy medium. Mm. You know, being tough mom, but also being compassionate. That's good. Yeah. Wow. Have you started getting recognized by fans yet? Yes, I have. <laughs> which, which, I don't wear my hair like this on the show, so I think, oh, I'm good, I'm incognito, you know. <laughs> they don't know me, you know. I, I can move through the world, and then somebody would just be, like, staring at me, and I'm like... Oh, what they looking at? And I'm like, okay, I've always been stared at because I'm tall, so I'm like, oh, people staring at me because I'm tall. And then somebody walk up to me like, you Rue Mama. <laughs> You is Rue Mama. Oh you Rue Mama. And I'll be like, yeah, OK, hi. <laughs> you know, so it's, yeah, I've been, I've been getting noticed, which is fun because yeah. people have their own, you know, experiences by watching the show. Either they have someone who have either OD'd or who is sober. So I'm always open to listen to people. I never just be like, you know, trying to like not be seen. So yeah. it's, it's, it's a good thing. That's good. That's yeah. good. I love that. <laughs> yeah. I can tell you, you're such a comedian. So you also do stand up. What type of yes. stuff do you talk about? Well, I've been doing stand-up for 20 years. 20 years. Yes, that was, a, thank you, thank you. That was, for me, as an, as an artist, that was my way of controlling my career. Mm. Because nobody can tell me I can't do stand-up. As long as there's a stage and a mic and I have my thoughts, I have my premises, I have my punchlines, I have my life, I can talk about whatever I want to talk about. Yes. Right. Yes. So what I be talking about. Who else should be talking about? Talk about being single. <laughs> for way too long, uh, talk about my family, talk about being in the business. I just look at everyday life and I just make, I make jokes about it. I love that freedom yeah. that you have in mm -hmm. that. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, tell everyone what Rose of Sharon is. Rose of Sharon. Okay, so Rose of Sharon is a nonprofit I created last year in honor of my mom. Mm. Yes, she beat cancer three times. Amen. Yes, <laughs> yes. Mama Sharon, wow. yes, that's my mama. Um, and so I wanted to help her with her mental health because she was having some issues being, you know, diagnosed a third time. And I'm like, you know what? I know other people are experiencing and just being in the pandemic, the after effects and how we grew up. So I said, you know what? Let me create a nonprofit that really tackles the mental health for the black community because getting help is a stigma in our community, right? You, 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 don't, you don't go to therapy, you go to work. You know, so <laughs> it's one of those things. Y'all know that's true. <laughs> you know, so I was like, no, we, it's, it's time for us to take a look at our mental health and really get in touch and, and deal with the anxiety and the depression and the unhealthy eating. So I was like, let me, let me, let me do my part. So I created Rose of Sharon. I love that. Yeah. You're such a light. Thank you. So beautiful. Thank you. And your mom opened up the Blue Tree Cafe. Tell us about that. So Blue Tree Cafe, it's a vegan restaurant in the hood. So you already know. Nice. People coming in, what y'all got here? Y'all got some pork chops? <laughs> y'all ain't got no chitlins. Uh-uh, what's vegan? I'm like, just try it. <laughs> just, you know, like before you say you don't eat vegan, right. just try it because it's fruits, it's vegetables, and she makes soul food vegan. Nice. So we, we do all the sides vegan, no meat. And so, you know, it's been a slow process, but it's one of those things that we both love to do. We both love to cook, we both love to eat. So it's, it's something that I share with her, and I, I, I like that, um, look at mama. She's I like beautiful. That, um, I like that she's switched over, yeah. I love that. Mm -hmm. Tell us about the new movie, 65. Yeah, I saw the trailer for 65. It looks so good. It looks good. It's really good. Yeah, I got a chance to see a pre-screening. And it's basically a sci-fi film. Mm -hmm. Like, it's starring Adam Driver okay. uh, and uh, Ariana Greenblatt. And they crash on this place, which they come to know as Earth, 65 million years ago. Yes, 65. yes, and so now they have to, with each other's help, get off this, this planet and, and survive, and so, and then on top of that, you have the dinosaurs. 
So you have all of those things going against them, and it's a nail biter, 90 minutes action packed. You're gonna love it. I'm in there. I'm in there. Hi. You know, I'm in there. I love that. <laughs> Congratulations Thank on you. all of that. Thank you. And I love this. Before you manifested working with Samuel L. Jackson, mm -hmm. did that happen? So it's one of those things, and for me, working with him and having that moment, it, it showed me that words have power, they right? Do. So I met him, I was coming here, he was leaving, and I was like, oh my gosh, it's Samuel Jack, like trying to be cool, like, hey, Sam, it's cool, you know? <laughs> and then he was like, I know who you are, and so we started talking, I said, you know, one day I'm gonna work with you. And he was like, okay, cool, all right. <laughs> you, know, you know, he wasn't rude or anything, but it's kind of like, oh, okay. Yeah. And then three months later, I got an opportunity to book a commercial, which, which was a Marvel commercial with Samuel L. Jackson. Now, I didn't know who the celebrity was because they didn't tell us. Mm. But on the day of the shoot, they told me, I'm like, are you serious? I'm, and they were like, yes. So I'm, I'm on set and I'm sitting there and Samuel, J Samuel L. Jackson walk in and he's like, what the beep you doing here? That sounds <laughs> just like him. And I'm like, well, you know, I know people, I know people. So he was like, he was like, oh my gosh, like, you know, he was so proud of me. And yes. it was just like a full circle moment. I was just like, I was like, words have power. They Be do. careful what you say. What you say? Good say and bad. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Thank you for being here. Will Thank you, you come back me. again? Yes. Manifest yes. that you're gonna to. come back here. I want to. You need to All right. stand up. Yes, That's I would love it. Yes. We'll hold you to yes. it. Be sure to check out 65 in theaters now. We'll be right back. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.